Did you know that it takes more energy to produce blue light than it does for red? Light emitting diodes, LEDs, convert the energy change of one electron into one light photon. Here's a great demonstration showing that the amount of energy that is required for visible light is different at different wavelengths. Using a Genicon hand generator, I'm charging a capacitor. Notice that first the red LED comes on, then the green, and finally the blue. What's happening here? A light emitting diode changes the electrical energy of one electron into the light energy of one photon. Thus, lower energy photons of red light are produced when the electrons drop through smaller voltage differences, while higher energy blue photons require higher voltage differences. It's interesting to see the lights come on in order, first the red, then the green, then the blue. But that's not all that's happening. It appears the top LED isn't lighting. Let's look again, this time I'll use my cell phone. It has a digital camera built in. As the capacitor discharges, we see the LEDs go out in reverse order. There goes the blue, now the green. But look, as the red starts to fade, we can now see that the infrared LED is growing strong. We can't see the infrared spectrum with the naked eye, but any digital camera can. With just a few simple electronic parts, students can build an apparatus that not only uses series and parallel circuits, but they can also see changes in the energy requirements. You'll need a Genicon hand generator or other variable power source, a one farad capacitor, four LEDs, red, green, blue, and infrared. You can also add a UV LED to make it more interesting, a volt ohm meter, 100 ohm resistors, and a small circuit board. Note that the colored LEDs look identical when they come out of the package, so it's a good idea to mark them for color right off to prevent any confusion later. Take a look at your LEDs. Note that the one leg of the connections is longer than the other. This is the cathode or positive side. Once completed, your circuit will have a positive and a negative terminal, so make sure to orient your LEDs at the same polarity. The first step is to insert a resistor and the infrared LED in series along the whole line in the circuit board with the negative leg of the LED next to the resistor. Then twist the two legs together to make a solid connection. Repeat this previous step in succession. After the infrared LED, add the red, green, then blue LEDs. Once the four LED series connections are made, twist the resistor wires together and then the LED wires together. This creates a parallel circuit amongst all the LEDs with each of the LEDs having a 100 ohm resistor in series. The resistor side will be the negative terminal of your circuit and the LED side will be the positive side. Connect the leads of the Genicon or variable power source to the terminals of the one farad capacitor. Connect alligator jumper wires between the capacitor terminals and the LED circuit terminals. Again, the LED circuit will have a positive and a negative terminal. If at first your circuit test does not light the LEDs, try reversing the polarity by switching the alligator clips. Your students will have a great time with this LED circuit. This is exactly the kind of lab activity that makes science fun.